Today is Thursday, October 19, 2023. I'm at 9th Street Station in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I'm recording and uploading this video from Harris Biden or the current administration in Washington, D.C. And this is part of my video series on the Lynx uh, City, uh, the Charlotte Lynx Blue Line. It's part of the Charlotte Area Transportation System. It's called CATS. Here's a system map. And um, now yesterday I started to talk about how uh, a lot of these stations are also destinations and I think the city has done a really good job at um, adding attractions around a lot of these stations. Uh, something to entice you to get off the train and spend money and take photos and, and to leave a good review and to you know, just kind of generate a conversation. So this is 9th Street Station. There's not a lot to do off of this station, really. This is in Uptown. Um, this Blue Line light rail, it's like a 20-mile track, and I think there's 16 stations. Um, and they're not officially divided into sections, but for all intents and purposes, it's like different sections. So um, I think Uptown Charlotte which is within um, the perimeter of I-277, Interstate 277. Uh, there are, let's see, one, two, three. There's five stations in Uptown Charlotte. This is the last one on the northbound. This is called 9th Street. Uptown Charlotte ends at like 12th Street. And there's a southbound train right there. <clears throat> um, that's... Uh, I was on the UNC Charlotte campus yesterday. They have a satellite um, in Uptown. It's called the Dubois Center. And there it is. And this building, let's see. Uh, I'll go this way. I'll show you guys this building. This is like a, I used to call it the Jenga building. I didn't like it at first, but it's it's grown on me. I like it. It's like a very distinct looking building. It's all glass panels and you'll see it in a second. So Uptown Charlotte is uh, historically it's divided into four wards and we're in first ward. First ward. That that's called the Ellis Apartments. I like them. It's like an L-shaped L-shaped building. I like them. And that, you know why they do that? So they can sell more units with with views. That's why they have like an L-shaped building because you have views from all all sides. Um, Yeah, the, re the, the reason why L-shaped buildings are popular sometimes is because they can sell more units with city views. Um, but here's the Dubois Center. And this is First Ward Park. And this is new. This is, this is kind of new. It's like uh, within the last five years. Within the last five years, Charlotte added two... Um, like city squares, this third ward park, also called Romare Bearden Park, and then first ward park, and it turned out really nicely. I think it was like a really good decision. Uh, Cause I remember, I remember downtown Charlotte before uh, first ward park was here and third ward park, and it was just really hot. Like going to uptown, you know, especially in the summer, it was like, there was no way to have like a quiet reprieve and like kind of refresh, but they, uh, added this park space at two parks in uptown so now there's somewhere to get shade look at that water feature right there and this is the w this is the dubois center get a better view of it i look i like this i like this it's interesting it's like um as you can see, it's like a guy. I'm not sure what's going on here. He doesn't have a face. 
um, but he's made up of like different characters from different languages. It looks like there's Chinese characters and like some English letters and numbers. And it's just someone working with a lot of information. It's just a guy dealing with a lot of information. See that? It's like Chinese characters and like some English letters. Someone lost in translation, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't have, there's no information here about who, who made this, but I like this one. Here's this like oval fountain, oval fountain. I like, I like ovals. I like oval shaped rooms. I like oval fountains. I like it. It's a, uh, what is this? Uh, there's a name for an oval. It's like, um, it's an oblong. I think it's called an ellipse, an e ellipse. I love water features. Even if you can't get in the water, it, it's just not, it's soothing and it's like refreshing to even be around it. Look at that. And uh, First Word Park has, is, that's uh, South Brevard Street and 8th Street. And uh, this one kind of has like a, some home, a lot of homeless people sleep here, but. You see that? I like I like the shape of it. I didn't like it at first, but I like it now. It's distinct. And uh, this park has like some interactive like I don't know, like uh, I guess it's for kids, but I like this when you can play some music with this. Got to have the right balance. And then, uh, this is like a... This is a view of... Uh, the skyline from, let's see, let me position myself, from the northeast, approaching it from the northeast. That's the truest financial building right there. That used to be a, di that used to be a different tenant. It used to be um, Hearst Communications. I think it used to be called the Hearst Building, H-E-A-R-S-T. Um, this is interesting. See that? Let's read this. The Air Quality Learning Station. Welcome to the Air Quality Learning Station, a place where you can learn about the air we breathe. Um, air pollution sensors. The Air Quality Learning Station has equipment that measures two kinds of air pollution that we can't see, but the sensors can detect. Ground level ozone and per particulate matter, microscopic particles that are suspended in the air. Data collected by these sensors is displayed on the screen. It's not working right now. Um, the smart flower creates electricity from sunlight using solar panels. This electricity helps power the air quality learning station. Any extra electricity goes to other things in the park, such as lighting. Um, and there's the solar panel, the solar flower thing I was talking about. I, I like this. This is uh, this is interesting thing to have that learn more about the air we breathe. It's like a jungle gym, and then here's like an outdoor gym.
um, for this outdoor gym for adults, and here's like a jungle gym for kids. What's going on? That is usually like a in, that's usually like a water fountain in the summer that you can get in to cool off. It's off for the winter time. And then that used to be Google Fiber, used to be the tenant of this building, but now it's um, WFAE Charlotte, which is Charlotte's uh, NPR station, National Public Radio Station. Here's another view of the, du uh, the Dubois Center. I keep, I'm always, I keep catching myself about to say W.E. Dubois. Because there's like someone in history, I think, named W.E. Dubois. But, <laughs> but I have to, because it's just the Dubois Center. It's not the W.E. Dubois Center, but is it WFAE Charlotte. Uh, I guess their broadcast is from right here. That's like Nat NPR station. I like NPR, so it's like talk radio, AM station. <laughs> And then um, here's the Imagine On Library. This is a children's library. It's an award-winning library, nationally recognized. Um, I've never really been here. I don't think this was open when I was like still in grade school, but this is part of the public library system in Charlotte. As of right now, this is the only library in Uptown Charlotte. There was another central library I think on 5th Street, that is currently closed for renovations, and uh, it, I mean, it, it, it's not renovations, they're overhauling it, like they're completely rebuilding it, and it's going to turn out really nicely. Uh, there's renderings of that available online, but there has not been a library in Uptown Charlotte in a couple years, because uh, they're like rebuilding it. I used to go to the library over here, but um, I like this too. Uh, speak the truth, hear the truth, and seek the truth. Uh, there's some quotations right there. Uh, there's like a fountain pen, a fountain pen. It's like the kind of pen that they use to like write the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence where you have to like dip it in ink. Um, and there's some quotations here. Uh, <clears throat> If we listen carefully, our critics instruct us better than our friends. Simplify your life. True wealth is found in that. Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> yeah. There's a pencil. And there's like a typewriter type of thing. Uh, let's play the vowel game. You think I owe you, but really you owe I an apology. Uh, <clears throat> um, here's uh, 7th Street Public Market. This is, uh, I could do a whole nother video about that. I guess I'll just do it here. Yeah, one of the good things about living in a city like Charlotte um, is that like if the city does the downtown area right everything is like right here like literally like right next to you know what i mean um somewhere like manhattan it's like all the attractions are super spread out but in the city like charlotte if the city does develops it correctly which charlotte has done a really good job with everything is like right here so if you're filming a video like me it's like you have so much stuff to talk about um, let me do a quick walkthrough this public market. This is like a, it's not a farmer's market, but they sell a bunch of like artisan goods and like, you'll see. Let me do a quick walkthrough here. So this is 7th Street Station. I got off at 9th Street. see those uh, 
empty storage container units. That's gonna be something too. 7th Street Public Market. I'm gonna pause this. No, we want to just get a quick shot of the inside. So it's like different uh, stalls, I guess. Gino's Pizza, it's New Jersey style pizza. It's pretty good, I've had it before. They get a, mm. It's like a souvenir shop. What's up? Cheese, wine. They're having a pancake breakfast here, hosted by the fire department in the month of October. I forget what day it is. Uh, I think that's like to raise money for Breast Cancer Awareness Month or something. Resident Culture, this is a brewery in Charlotte. How you doing? Which floor are you going to? Three, please. I mean, three, please. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So I can't be up here too long, or they're probably going to give me a hard time about it, but um, this is a really good view of Uptown Charlotte. There's another view of the Dubois Center, UNC Charlotte Satellite Campus. It's a Homewood Suites that was uh, completed this year. And I like this one because it's like kind of like right here, um, literally right next to all these buildings. It's the Fifth Third Center. That building's called The View. That's the tallest residential building, I think, uh, between New York and Miami. Apartment buildings, uh, uh, that's called Spirit Square. I guess they're redoing that. I don't know what they're actually doing there. There's a Truist Financial Center. That's a product of a uh, merger of BB&T and SunTrust. They're actually the sixth largest financial institution in the United States and they bought that building outright. I like that building. I like the architectural style of it. It's like, uh, looks like an older building, but it's not. It's a parking deck for, it's a view of like the, of East Charlotte. See, Charlotte has a lot of tree canopy, so it kind of just looks like you're looking at a forest, but there's a bunch of stuff over there. Um, it's the west side, and this is a view of uptown from approaching from the northeast. And there's a Bank of America building in Truist Financial Center right next to one another. And I'm going to empty out here on 6th Street. I started at 9th Street. You see what I mean? Some uh, children's art, Xavier, 10 years old, Richard, eight years old. Is this a shirt? <clears throat> this is where I meet with the Galactic Senate in like the Star Wars movies, it's right here. So where I meet with them. Remember that scene in, uh, <clears throat> Revenge of the Sith, where it's like uh, Yoda and Emperor Palpatine, and they're in like this like Galactic Senate. <laughs> you know, like throwing, he's like using the Force, like throw these like, I don't know, like uh, pods, I guess, like. <laughs> I 
uh, Chancellor Palpatine. Wow, what a snake. I never knew the whole time, but here, October events. Uh, the pancake breakfast are, was already passed, October 14th. That's too bad. We don't need a fire department in Charlotte anyway. <laughs> kidding, kidding. <clears throat> The rail trail. The rail trail. Go ahead, go ahead. It's a Lincoln Aviator. No, no, it's not an Aviator. I don't know what kind of Lincoln that is. I've been seeing a lot of Lincolns lately. Lincoln Collin. I would never drive. I would. I don't think I would drive a Lincoln. It's a bad omen. I, kidding. I don't even believe in that. Beautiful day we're having. Okay, so, I so what I'm doing, I mean, um, I don't know, as far as I know, no one else has done this in Charlotte, so I think I'm a good tour guide. Um, seeing as how I'm like a walking encyclopedia, I'm like a walking, talking encyclopedia, um, that updates in real time, but I'm, uh, this is also collateral. This is also collateral. This is my insurance policy. So nobody can ever say that I'm not well behaved or that I'm creating a problem or that I'm not mentally fit, ridiculous accusations. It's 21st century McCarthyism. It's reminiscent of the Red Scare. Uh, we're throwing our you know, political opposition. We're uh, just discriminating against them and it's not okay. I'm talking about the Democratic Party. I am a Democrat at this point. You know, I used to be a Republican, but Republicans have not been loyal to me. They have not been loyal to me. And I was a Republican before I became homeless and was in and out of the criminal justice, in and out of jail and all that now. And before I went hungry, I was a Republican before all that. Now I'm a Democrat because I believe in social welfare programs. I think the U.S. government has enough money to do it. But, um, yeah, I'm talking, but, but it's also not okay to... Uh, file federal lawsuits against a sitting president that are like completely empty. I feel bad for Donald Trump. I do. I don't I, I don't agree with what the Democrats have done. Basically, they've just been filing lawsuits against him, knowing that there's no evidence. But they're doing that because they know that once they file the suit and they do this in like usually in the Ninth Circuit Court, which is um, on the West Coast, very liberal circuit court. And I, I think that the integrity of those judges should be should be questioned. I think that because uh, they do that knowing that there's no real evidence against Donald Trump, but that he'll have to go to those court dates and that the news will report about it. I think it's very unfair to Donald Trump. And I think it should concern everybody. And I'm saying this as a Democrat because um, that's like McCarthyism. Joseph McCarthy was a senator. Uh, like in the early 20th century and what he did was he basically made up a lie saying that there was like 200 communists in the State Department or something and he was like capitalizing off the Red Scare this was at this was like during the time of the Soviet Union USSR and they actually started putting people in jail accusing them of being communists and it was completely baseless there was like no real evidence to support this excuse me um, oh shit, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I usually don't do that, but you know, you know, you should be, I always have the right of way as a pedestrian, by the way, that's what the law says. Even if I don't have the crosswalk. Excuse me. Uh, and I'll end this over here so I can pay attention to where I'm walking, but this is my insurance policy. <clears throat> it's like, uh, today's uh, Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Biden Harris of the current administration in Washington, D.C. God bless America. God bless everybody. I wish everybody the best. 
Okay, have a wonderful rest of your week. Well, it, here's like the ground level of the Truist Financial Center. This is Fish Street in Charlotte. Um, this uh, they're trying to like market this as like a the Fifth Street district or something. Basically, there's just a lot of bars on Fifth Street. You can go bar hopping here. Uh, people from out of town. I've had a couple people from out of town ask me, "Hey, where do I go to drink in Charlotte or hang out?" And I usually tell them to go to South End or to go to Fifth Street or go a lot of arcade because you can bar hop here. There's Connolly's on Fifth. New York Giants fans. Um, and I guess I'll just extend this a little bit. We're leaving, um, leaving First Ward, entering for Fourth Ward. Nobody in Charlotte uses that to give directions. It's like a historical thing, but there's the Fifth Third Center. How you doing, guys? There's the Ivy's Hotel and Residences. That used to be a department store. I used to sell clothes and jewelry and stuff like that. It's been uh, converted into like a boutique hotel. I've been there before. Uh, I said in an Airbnb, not in the hotel, but hey, so I can't speak to the hotel. But that's like a couple's hotel. So I, I just walked through uh, First Ward Park and I'm approaching Fourth Ward Park. Fourth Ward Park is older. Uh, Fourth Ward Park is maybe over 100 years old because uh, Fourth Ward is a very historic district in Charlotte. I think uh, there's a couple like, uh, there's a bunch of like national historic registry buildings here that cannot be torn down because of their historical value. It's like Victorian style homes. Um, there's Cowbell Burger and Whiskey Bar, and then there's Roxbury 90s nightclub or something. Did that shut down? Looks like it's now called Tequila House. That, wow, that's really sad. Um, th this used to be called the Roxbury, which I thought was cooler than Tequila House. And there's Dandelion Market. I had a friend who worked here. I've heard good things about Dandelion Market too. That's You can also drink there, but it's more like brunch offerings, mimosas and stuff like that. Um, uh, that was Tryon Street. This is Fifth Street, and then this is North Church Street for reference on a map. Um, and I, excuse me, this is not Fourth Ward Park. This is... Uh, the old settler cemetery. But everybody buried here was buried in like the 1700s or 1800s. So I don't think anybody goes here to grieve or mourn or anything like that. So people walk their pets here. And I mean, because, because the people buried here were buried so long ago, this is like for all intents and purposes, like a city park. Um, so I'm gonna just walk through here really quick. There's the view. It's the name of the building. If you look that building up, it's like uh, the tallest residential tower between New York and Miami, Florida. So that's neat. Charlotte Settler Cemetery. Charlotte was established in 1768 by settlers who were, for the most part, Scots Irish Presbyterians. In the first quarter of the 19th century, a church was built in town to be used by all denominations. Presbyterian minister John Thompson is said to have preached in the Blacksmith's Grove, Grove, now the grounds of the First Presbyterian Church across Fifth Street from the cemetery. Um, that's an interesting look. In the 1750s, as was the custom of great, a graveyard was laid off adjacent to the church to be used as a common burying ground for the town of Charlotte. Um, gravestones date from 1776 to 1884. Many of Charlotte's founding pioneers and veterans of the Revolutionary and the Civil War relate to rest here. Um, graves arranged in family groups, not in rigid rows. Um, and I'm like tired of reading about this, but there's more information about it at the public library on uh, 310 North Tryon Street. Here's the names of all the people who are buried here. 
It's a lot more names than I than it looks like. Th there's more names than tombstones. Um, but uh, there's a really old magnolia. I love magnolia trees. I think they're so beautiful. I wish there was more of them. So many oak trees. There's a really mature magnolia tree. I do this, it's my insurance policy because like I used to be really bad, I was really badly harassed at one point by people following me on foot. As you can see and as you can hear, it doesn't make sense. Um, it, and like my conduct has been exemplary throughout my entire life. I've never broken the law. And, and I, not, not only am I a law abiding citizen, but I'm a polite person. I'm well behaved. Because you, you, be, you can follow the law and be, ba and be poorly behaved, but not only do I follow the law, but I'm also a very polite person. Um, I don't, what kind of tree is this? I like this. I see these sometimes. Look at this. It's a very big leaf. This is like, uh, what kind of tree is that? Take a picture of this leaf of it. I want to find out what kind of tree this is. <clears throat> Get a picture of the trunk. <clears throat> this looks like it's like more native to the southeast. I think I see more of these like near the coast. No, but like, um, yeah, I do this as an insurance policy because whatever they were doing, it never led to me being assaulted or, and, but it felt like that. I don't know, they really scared me and even, and scarred me. There's another Magnolia I'm talking about the police department in Charlotte. I don't know why they did that, but that like sometimes it's, sometimes, some days it's like, I feel kind of uncomfortable still. Um, it's a Magnolia tree. Here's another Magnolia tree. Another mature magnolia. I love magnolias. There's so many oak trees, and you never see a street lined with magnolia trees. Like, there, you know, you know, there's like a street with like a bunch of mature oak trees. I love magnolia trees. No one gives them any love. Look at that squirrel. <clears throat> so I started at First Ward Park, and. Um, there's Fourth Ward Park. That one is like way older. That's like over a hundred, that might be over a hundred years old. Hopefully there's like some kind of historical marker over there that explains it in greater detail. But Fourth Ward has a lot of like national registry, um, historic homes that are like legally being preserved because of their historical value. It's like Victorian homes. I'm not gonna walk really like um, in front of the homes, but Fourth Ward, the best street to look at it is North Poplar. And then Graham Street is over there. I'm just gonna walk through the park a little bit. Oh shit, are they gonna stop? Keep, go ahead. <laughs> I, usually I, I usually look both ways before I cross the street. It's like, I feel like when I'm doing videos, I don't, but. <laughs> um, 100 years ago, Fourth Ward held many Victorian houses, Charlotte's first hospital, and industries including the Charlotte Cotton Mill. When residents left for the suburbs after World War II, Fourth Ward went into decline, but led by women of the Junior League, helped by low interest bank loans, Fourth Ward was reborn as Charlotte's first historic district in 1976. Fourth Ward is Charlotte's only pre-streetcar and pre-automobile neighborhood that retains several of its original structures. When First Ward began to take shape, walking, not riding, was the way you got around. Dr. Dan Morrill, Charlotte historian. What is a ward? A ward is an electric election district. Thanks to rapid population growth following arrival of railroads in the 1850s, Charlotte became big enough by 1869 that local leaders divided the city into four election districts. They used the main streets, Trade Street and Tryon Street as the dividing lines. The outer boundary of the wards ran along the city's edge approximately where the Interstate 277 loop runs today. Um, and park-like cemeteries. I'm surprised to see that because I just said that. 
Settler Cemetery at 5th Street and Church Street was Charlotte's first public burying ground in 1853. It was superseded by a new rural cemetery with winding landscape drives off six park like cemeteries. It's like basically, I just left a cemetery that is kind of looks like this park um, just because the people buried there were buried so long ago. You'll never see flowers at the, at the tombstones. Uh, Fourth Ward Park. So as you can see, this is like way older than the one I just came from. And uh, there's like a map of Fourth Ward. I'm not gonna walk through because it's just houses. It's not really anything to do. Um, but here's this water feature. I love these, it's so refreshing and soothing. Charlotte's getting rid of a lot of water features. I don't know why. And like, um, I have another video about um, Third Street Station. Where I, I sh they, there's a beautiful water fountain there and they got rid of it and planted a tree. I don't know why. Um, and there was another water feature right at the intersection, like right at the main intersection in Uptown. And it's called Thomas Polk Park. And it was a beautiful water fountain there it looked like a waterfall, like a cascade. And it was a beautiful water feature and they got rid of it for some reason. And um, they're CMPD, they're the people who fucking baselessly arrested me 10 times and scared the shit out of me. So now I feel like I have to do this as an insurance policy. Um, and I'm sure they had no idea who they were dealing with and probably regret it in hindsight, but uh, I'll, I'm not trying to talk about that right now. I'll probably talk about that more in the coming weeks because I feel like I'm entitled to settlement money and, and like, and I, I think I know that. I'm just, I can't afford litigation help or like, a, you know what I mean? I, I, I've been poor my whole life and I'm the first person in my family to be born on US soil. So I'm trying to negotiate a contract with them or some kind of deal myself because I can't afford a litigator to do it. But they've been unwilling to uh, in the beginning stage of negotiations. Um, here's a Harris Teeter. And I'm gonna end this here. Uh, well, should I go to the police department? Yeah, nah, it's too far of a walk. The police department, Central Division Police Department is right down the street over here. It's like two blocks away. Um, and they serve the downtown area that's called Central Division. And uh, I've never really, I don't think they've ever arrested me. I, I have most of my problems were with East Way Division, but they've, it's hard to arrest people like in Uptown, you know, so. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, my conduct is exemplary, exemplary. I'm like, a, I'm a good role model even for other people. So I'm gonna cut this off. Have a wonderful day. God bless America.